Now we have report that petrol prices in Makodi have surged to 1,500 naira per litre, leaving motorists and commuters stranded and frustrated. Prior to the sudden increase, prices ranging or ranged between 930 naira and 1,000 naira per litre, with an NPC mega station selling at 670 naira per litre when available. And most filling stations in Makodi were closed, but the few open stations sold at 980 naira. That's between 980 to 1,100 naira. And we also have reports that black marketers capitalized on the shortage, selling at 1,500 naira per liter and long queues from that nmpc mega station selling petrol at 898 naira per liter while stations outside the capital charged up to one three that's 1300 naira per liter um we have civil servants and residents that have expressed anger and frustration over the rising prices and hardship that they are facing they went ahead to talk, talk uh, to actually say that the federal government why is this federal government doing this in nigeria i'm quoting one of them now how can they toy with the well of Nigeria is by increasing pump price of fuel when we cannot feed our families and meet family commitments because of their bad anti people policies. The government is obviously clueless. They should know that by increasing the pump price of fuel, inf inflation will continue to rise and Nigerians will be driven into poverty the more. All right, a, a lot of other statements that were made for, by most Nigerians, some Nigerians, that's from that particular state. But right here in River State, we're also experiencing the same thing. We're experiencing a hike in, and sometimes it's not like they don't have the money to buy the fuel. They have the money to buy the petrol, but the problem is they can't even find it. I'd like to get your reaction to this story. It, it, it's a problem of both having the money to buy and both seeing the product to buy. It was yesterday morning that I first saw I reports that um, the fuel price at NMPC, which has hit that also sold at 560 something to 600, was selling at 850. I mean, it was captured in their uh, um, meter reading that it's 850, so it wasn't a hearsay. Abit, that was in Lagos. But of course, you know, if NMPC in Lagos sells that way, it should be the same thing in Lagos. But like the story you just shared, even as at when it is 600, 500 something, like the, the report said, when available. Yeah. It's not always available. How many people can buy from the NMPC? Go to an NMPC on a bar road there. There's a long queue. Somebody said the other night he spent 14 hours to buy fuel. That's a productive hour. That man are lost. That means I mean, how many hours is even the man are? Ah, eight to nine hours. Ah, by the time you spend 14 hours, that means if it were to be calculated, you have even done over time in the filling station. These are time wasted. Calculate it by how many people we are at that first station and other filling stations across the state, across the country. You know how many man are the country has lost, how many productive are the country has lost. Then just um, a few days back, I think last week, the uh, federal food protection, uh, consumer protection was said to have given um, traders ultimatum to um, crash the prices of goods. I felt. Yes, one month. Could this be a joke or something? Why? Before you give such this thing, you, you take a holistic look at the factors that affect the price of goods as services. See, since we started seeing this inflation in recent time, you are yet to see any of this persons, either traders or transporters that have automatically become rich because they are charging more. It tells you something. The money they charge don't go to them. They buy at exorbitant price. People have been driven to poverty. Before you talk about crashing price of goods, you just said that a week, then just a few days after the price of fuel goes up again. And with the price of fuel going up, that means the logistics for moving goods and services, but let's stay with goods and leave services now. For moving goods, we definitely go up. And with that increase in logistics, this is also a country where majority of the producers, the few producers that we have, use alternative power supply that run on um, petrol and diesel, you know, those things. So there is no problem. So that means this, the cost of production will go up, the cost of moving the goods will go up. With that, definitely, we are not about to see the crash in price of goods and services. And of course, the suffering is becoming unbearable for most people. For crying out like 
even when you have the money, for the better part of this year, parts of Nigeria like Lagos and Abuja have consistently experienced fuel scarcity. People spending us at the fuel station. station. We can't continue like this. Okay, let's talk about the re um, reference you made to the one one ultimatum that was given to marketers to crash the prices of goods and services. I remember in that particular meeting, we had, um, it was mentioned, a particular product was referenced. I don't know if you remember that story. A particular, was it Blender or something in, the, in another country? Was it the UK now, which is a particular price? And then a, a particular um, Lagos supermarket sold it like, not just like 10 times the price. So they are, they are insinuating that there are probably some people, aside the primary cost which you have mentioned, there are probably some people who might be adding, that's um, inflating the prices artificially and, you know, taking advantage of the market crisis that's currently going on. Absolutely, there may be one or two Shylock, you know, in the system trying to take advantage of it. But be that as it may, Nigerian over time has really not have a fantastic pricing system. But the thing is, for the goods, when, when Nigerians complain about inflation, we are not talking about blender. We are talking about food items. Gari, yam, rice. Things that can produce, we produce locally and we need for everyday, not luxury item like mm -hmm. blender. Of course, it wasn't supposed to be a luxury item. But the thing is that with this increase in fuel, now with the new increase in fuel, by the way, we may not have seen the last increase in fuel. If you if you notice since this year we have been, it has been from one increase to the other. So we may not have seen the increase. Definitely the price of things will go up. Definitely many more Nigerians would rather than might be driven into poverty, into hunger. More. Many more Nigeria beyond the not having food to, to eat, inability to commute, to move from point A to point B is increasingly become difficult. So I think it's high time a solution is found. What, what solution are, are, we, are you talking about? You know, the, the, the excuses government would always give why these prices are uh, going up, especially for fuel, is that, oh, it's an international product, we import the fuel and all that. But this is also a product we produce. The case of Nigeria is like a person who plants cassava, fries gari, sells the whole gari, and go buy eba at exorbitant rate. Because we produce this way. Can't we refine what we will use so, so the prices will not be so much affected by the international market. Because you can't be telling yourself, oh, this is not our fault, especially. And now, the controversy again is that you claim on one hand that subsidy is gone. At another point, government shows out figures that are supposedly money paid for subsidy. So if we keep experiencing this in increase, can somebody explain to us or try to do a reconciliation between the removal of subsidy um, and the continuous payment of subsidy and then the unending increase in fuel price with the attendant suffering people are going through. You know, I asked that question this morning when we were talking about the removal of fuel subsidy, the announcement on the removal, and then the NMPC coming up to say they've been paying, subsidy. they've been subsidizing the fuel that they get to import. If they were going to sell at the price at which they're importing, it would be way higher, right? So that means they're subsidizing close to half, half the price, according to them, as at that time, that was uh, as at, uh, last week, according to reports. But now it's looking like um, the, the independent marketers are saying they are now buying higher than they used to it, buy it at 9.50, yeah. 9.80. And definitely you don't expect them to sell at the price mm. that they are buying. So mm. that's where the increase. But Nigerians are asking, how come... Subsidy, re subsidy is removed as announced, and then you're talking about a, sub a, a price that you're subsidizing for fuel. Okay, so why do we not have the same price? Why is there an increase if there's still a sub subsidy somehow Something is not being right. paid for exactly. fuel? Something is not right. If you're paying for subsidy, what percentage are you paying for? What percentage? Because you, on your own, you and I mean the government said subsidy is gone. The same government turns around and say we are paying for subsidy. What are you talking about? Then, the practical reality, whether subsidy is gone or subsidy stays, is that we keep experiencing increase in the product every now and again. So that tells that something is 
is strong. The ordinary man in the street may care less about what terminology you use, whether you call it subsidy or you invent a new name for whatever you pay for. What they care about is the availability of products and the ability to afford the mm. same product. If I can't afford the product, the product is really available. Whatever you're saying may make it to no sense. But now we, we have reports that Dangote Refinery has reeled out fuel. Do you see that as a, you know, a, a new dawn or, or break or light somewhere regarding uh, uh, fuel issues in Nigeria currently? New dawn? Maybe yes, but how does that new dawn impact the ordinary person? The breaking of a new day, how does it affect a dying man? You don't think it will affect or impact no, the price no, of fuel? No, because a statement credited to Dangote himself, uh, I think a question was asking or um, how, um, if maybe if the product was from local source, his answer was local or not, that they would get the product. So it definitely means that the fuel may not have come from NNPC, which means it may not be a local source, probably got it from the international market. Then if he got it from the international market, of course he's into business. He's probably going to sell it at a rate which is obtainable at the international market. So it may make no much... He said get, if he gets what from the international market? The crude. No, he's, he's going to get it from... Uh, no, but from his response, I said he was quoted to us, saying, whether local or not, that they found a way to get... So that suggests that the product didn't come from the local, um, um, that is from the NMPC supply local market. Because if it comes from, that's the only way the government can even help and make the guy sell at a reduced price. If you give him from the local market and give him a Naira price. Because yeah, that's what reports say. Yeah, because if, if you didn't give him um, the Naira price, you sold to him at international rate, you can't ask him to sell at a different uh, price. So. If these things are not factored in, how he got how he got his crude, you know, at what rate was he sold to? If he buys like every other Tom, Dick and Harry buys from the international market, you don't expect him to sell at a reduced price. I mean, he's not a father Christmas. Then another thing that worries most of us is that it's still a monopoly. How? Yeah, he's the only one refining the product oh, okay. here. So it's still a monopoly, especially when you consider other products the guy has produced. For example, cement. Mm. How cheap is cement? At least we have an antecedent of one of his products. How cheap is cement that, that is produced locally? So if he has not been able to crash the price of cement, just it may be, maybe he may not crash the price of... You know, Nigerians right. have been calling for the government to do something about our refineries since we're having issues with uh, fuel price and, you know, importation and all of that. And then we had reports that the Kaduna and the World Refinery would be somewhat privatized for the next five years, but it's out for bidders now, so we're expecting bidders to come. And there are some criteria, although that has been provided in that regard. Do you see that as something that is, do you see that as the government uh, taking out measures? How do you think that will also get to affect the price of fuel and the crisis of inflation of fuel price we're having? If it goes, if those refineries goes to private hands, the only thing that is guaranteed is that they will probably work. Since the guys who will take over the refineries who want to put it to work to recover whatever money they would have paid to government, it's business, so they would want to, they're in business to make profit. But it may not guarantee the crash in price of product if they face the same hackling tax Dangote is facing with getting product. But if we have a system here, um, because they are Nigerian refinery now, what I mean Nigerian refineries is that because they are operating in Nigeria and they supply the Nigerian market, the Nigerian government through the NMPC or with their new name, try to give them fuel. If that's uh, make it a priority to see that they get fuel before we sell to the foreign uh, market and also ensure that we sell to them with our local currency rather than um, dollar. Yeah, rather mm -hmm. than the dollarized price. Then with that, maybe the prices can come down. But until right. that happens. We may not see a crash. Okay, so we hope that we'll see um, a light in that regard with the prices of fuel reduced. Because when it's increased, we, we, when there's an inflation in that, we hear 
increase in price of Absolutely. transportation especially mm -hmm. and then transportation price will definitely affect prices it, of it has goods a multiplier as yes effect. and and then services and that's what nigerians are facing currently mm -hmm. we have been complaining about the hike and then there's a further hike mm -hmm. so it should be actually looked into but let's look at the next story now